What is up, women and gentle women? Today we have a tournament report from the Greenville, South Carolina regionals this weekend. And if you've been following the channel, you know I took Orcus, and the list is pretty similar to what, if not exactly the same, to the last list that I posted. So this is mainly a tournament report and then adjustments that's going to be made to the deck going forward. And yeah, let's just go ahead and jump right into this. Um, let's hit the tournament report first. Unfortunately, we did not get our invite this weekend. Um, we came very close as always, but we still just didn't quite make it. Um, so round one, we played against Orcus. That was a 2-0 win for us. Um, game one, we opened very subpar. I... My turn one field was activate Babel, set uh, Harp, and set an Impermanence, and passed. Um, he over, my opponent overplayed around the face down and ended up going through killing the, killing the Harp, and then summoning it. I ended up summoning out Nightmare. He killed the Babel, uh, then went to play around the back row and made a Nightmare Unicorn to bounce the back row and I just impermanenced it so he didn't really end on anything great and we just killed in the next turn. Um, and then game two, he went first, I decided to go second and I just broke his board and killed him. Uh, round two, we played against True Draco and if you know anything about me, that deck is the bane of my existence and I seem to always lose to it and I lost to it to a two... By 2-0. Um, I forget the gentleman's name, but he was one of the captains for Team 8. Super nice guy, super chill. Um, I made a misplay game one against him. Um, he activated Heritage and I cosmic the Heritage. I sh probably should have just held the Cosmic, but it the way the line of play he was making, it seemed like Heritage was his only line of play, and I knew I was gonna lose the Cosmic anyway. If I'd have realized sooner that I was playing against Draco, I would have never set the Cosmic. But that was a swift 2-0 for him. Um, nothing I could have done there. Uh, round three, we played against Dino Thunder, and we beat it 2-0. Um, nothing really particular happened in that matchup. Um, we ended up winning the die roll. We went first game one. Uh, he didn't really draw into his Thunder en Engine other than Thunder Dragon. He went through three Thunder Dragons to kind of get them out of the deck. Ended on a first turn board of double UTC and Penistag, leaving us with 200 life points and just enough for us to be able to come back and win on our following turn. Uh, and then game two was more of the same. We made him going fir go first just because... I know how dinosaurs like to go second and break boards, um, and that actually worked out really well for us because he ended on a UTC and couldn't really stop us. Uh, we were able to bait out the UTC effect and then still be able to push through for game. Round four, we played against Stryker. Uh, this game was very back and forth. I won game one, he won game two. We go into game three with about five minutes left in the round. I opened probably the worst hand I've opened all weekend. I ended on a Harp Horror setting two and passing. Uh, the turn of the play was very odd. He goes engage to search. Um, I forget what he searched. I think it was... Oh, he searches Shark Cannon off of Engage. Um, we did not have Babel. So, no, we did have Babel because, no, we didn't have Babel. Yeah, I ended on a, not a Harp Horror, but a Nightmare. That's right, because I was able to get Harp in the grave and then summon Nightmare as a kind of a wall. Because we knew he was playing Striker, so we knew he couldn't kill us. So we put Harp up, or Nightmare up, that way he couldn't swing over it. Even if he got Kagari big enough, he couldn't run over it because... Nightmare can't be destroyed by battle with a Link monster. Um, so we couldn't kill the Nightmare, so we'd have two monsters to make something next turn because we opened double Harp, double Nightmare, um, and Impermanence. But he decides to go engage into uh, Shark Cannon, and then he make Normal's Ray makes Kinda. Uh, 
goes to battle phase. When he enters battle phase, we impermanence the kind of that way he can't attack us directly. Um, he attempts to attack directly, and I remind him that his card was impermanence. He's like, oh, okay, well, just uh, Widow Anchor, because he hard drew it, take your monster, and then swing direct for 15, and then he stalled for the last little bit of time that was left in the round. Um, so we lost that one because of time. We lost by 1,500 life points. If we would have gotten another turn, we probably could have won that game. Um, I drew my top card, which was going to be a mind control, and he was going to end with a shark cannon, and maybe he set three... And then time is called when he was in the end phase. Um, we were drawing mind control for turn. And looking at his sets, one was the shark cannon, uh, a jamming waves, and I think another engage was just like three bluffs trying to dr draw out some time. Um, so we would have definitely been able to push in for some damage if we would have gotten a turn. We just didn't get a turn. Um, so that chalks up round four. Round five, we played another Orcus Mirror. We won that Mirror 2-0. Um, I felt very confident in this event, going into this event, playing against the Mirror Match. Um, and I won another one 2-0. No problem with that one. Uh, round six, we played another Sky Striker. And kind of the same situation, but we were able to come out on top this time. Uh, we won that one 2-1. Uh, we won game one pretty handily. He won game two. Um... I kind of scooped a little early because I noticed the time was getting low. We were about 15 minutes, and I didn't want another situation that happened in round four where I should have probably scooped game two a little bit faster and maybe not put myself in this situation. So I went ahead and preemptively scooped game two because we were already low on resources, and he was just gaining so much with Engage. Um, so game three was a lot of – was not so much back and forth. He kind of bricked, had no access to his extra deck. He didn't have a way to get to Ray or – Anchor, he was, or not Anchor, but uh, Hornet Drones. He was just kind of relying on what he was drawing for turn. It wasn't really getting there. Um, he had Floodgates, but it wasn't enough to stop us. We had the outs to the Floodgates. Um, I believe his opening turn was set five pass, and we draw for turn and drew evenly matched. So we evenly matched him, and we just started grinding away from there, whittling him down, and, and eventually taking the game. <clears throat> Uh, round seven, we played against Trudeco again, and we lost this one yet again, 2-1, dropping us down to X3 at round seven with nine rounds of Swiss, meaning a couple X3s could still top, so we went into went ahead and continued playing. We go into round eight, and we played round eight against another Orcus Mirror, and we won this one 2-1. It was a lot closer, and the opponent I played was super nice, super chill dude, and we just had a really good game. Uh, it was really back and forth, except for game three. He just opened very, very subpar, and I opened absolutely amazing to go second because I decided to make him go first because I felt confident in my ability to break the Orcus board. But we were able to squeak that game out. Um, going into round nine, now we're on the bubble and just have to win one more round. So we sit down. They ended up repairing us. And I got paired up against another Orcus matchup. But this Orcus player was playing a very strange build of Orcus. And it caught me off guard. Um, so game one, we win pretty handily. We go to game two. Um, he wins. He, he pretty much made me go second. I was expecting him to go first. He played very strange. Like he wasn't. He didn't play Orcus like. Normally, most people play Orcist, or in my opinion, the most optimal way to play Orcist. But he played very strangely going and went second. Played very strangely. Uh, wasn't playing like mind controls and stuff. Just uh, Mecha, uh, what's that card? Machina Fortress and a couple other cards like that. And he played very strange to me. And it just caught me off guard. And then we go into game three. And... I make him go first because I thought, okay, well, he made me go first, so maybe he wants to go second and break my board. So I make him go first. Um, he complains about his hand and sets three and just passes. Um, so we go into our turn, or no, he sets two and passes. So we go into our turn not fearing anything, and that's probably my own demise. I didn't fear his back row at all. It was just two sets. So I go in and start pushing, and instead of clearing the back row, um, I just went ahead and went straight to Boral Sword Dragon and then summon out Ding. 
And as soon as I summoned that thing, he super polyed away my board, which threw me off guard because I wasn't expecting to see super poly in the last round of the uh, tournament in a mirror match of all things. But he out it, I played myself. I played right into the super poly. Um, I probably, I would have won that game if I would have gone through and done it properly. If I wouldn't have rushed me like, oh, I've got game right here. I can just kill him. If I would have done it properly and made Phoenix pop a back row and then gone up into a unicorn, spin the other one, I'd have been fine. I would have still been able to establish normal Orcus board. I just wouldn't have been able to kill him and probably would have been able to finish the game off in the next turn. But that's my fault. Uh, lessons were learned. We're going to take these lessons into the rest of the format. Um, there's only one more event this list that I'll be, this ban list that I'll be able to attend, and that's going to be the Columbus, Ohio Regionals, and I plan to go to it. I'm um, going to be still playing a lot with Orcus and learning the deck more. Um, I've got a couple of friends of mine that are going to help me play test against True Draco because I just, that, since I came back in the game, I have struggled playing against that deck. I lose to it every Regionals, and I think I've only beaten it once since I came back to the game a couple years ago. Um, right when Draco and it, I came back at the tail end of the Pendulum Magician format. And Draco has just always been a problem for me. I don't know what it is, just bad luck or what, but I just seem to always lose to that deck. Um, and it's not really, in case anybody's wondering, it's not there can only be one. Um, that didn't give me any problems this weekend. It was uh, Monarch Erupt just like blew me out. And then game three against the second Draco player I played, I drew the evenly match. He just had the iron wall and I didn't have any follow-ups uh, to clear the amount of back row they had. But onto the, the deck list, it's pretty similar to what I had before. We still have the two mathematicians. I'm definitely going to be bumping this to three. Uh, we played the two scrap recycler. Um, there was multiple times I opened both of these, which wasn't terrible because it let me have another starter card for the next turn. But... I'm definitely just going to bump this to three. So I'll be cutting both the scrap recyclers, one for Math Man, and then I'm not 100% sure about the other one, but this is these are definitely getting cut for one more of these and then something else. Um, to continue off on the starters, we played the one Griffer and one Armageddon Knight. These were absolutely amazing. Um, I freaking love these cards. Every time I drew them, I was happy. Um, drew Greffer Nessie a lot. Um, drew Greffer... Uh, Gizmek a few times, uh, Greffer, Nightmare, just Greffer and any car, any of my cards that are normally dead in hand was absolutely amazing. Um, being able to special summon it for free and not even have to, like, you don't always need the discard effect to send from deck to grave, but just having the free body on board. So, like, there's times where it's like, oh, well, if I just normal summon harp and then pitch nightmare summon greffer that's like full combo and they can waste their ash if i should decide to use this effect or not um but moving forward to the orcas package you play the standard three nightmare three harp i played two symbol and one brass um i really liked brass um there's a few times where i sided it out just not having enough stuff to side in and out and it came up every time I sided it out. It was like, oh, I could just dump brass here and then fix my whole hand. Oh, wait, I sided it out. Well, crap, that sucks. But okay, I'll figure something else out. So brass is very good. Um, I don't know if I'll bump it to two, but I very, very much enjoyed having the one. And then, of course, the one world wand. And you might as well call this an Orcus card as Gizmek. You have to play Gizmek. Um, Next, we played the Danger Package, which was, we played two and one of each of these. Um, this was good. It was nice to have. Um, I'm not 100% sure, honestly, on this. I'm probably going to change the lineup. I'm probably going to take these out because it never really came up that much that I needed an extender. Um, they help you play around. There can only be one. But that was never really too big of an issue this weekend was playing around. There can only be one. Um, normally I can get two monsters on board to make a Phoenix and pop it, especially since I'm playing so many extra normal summons that aren't machines. Um, and then Gizmex, the free machine extender. So I don't know. Um, this might stay, this might go. Um, 
I'm probably going to test it out this weekend for Yu-Gi-Oh! Day, the charity event, without these and play three Ashes and then this and the Scrap Recycler beating something else. What? I'm not sure yet, but probably something else. Um, but definitely three Ashes are going in the deck to uh, complement the three Phantasmes. Um, this is another reason why you can play around there can only be one so well, just because you can just, like, this comes out for free uh, in the Striker matchup. Um, it's dead against Draco. But I wasn't expecting to see a lot of Draco, but I ran into two of them. Unfortunately, um, this and every time I ran into Draco, going game one, I opened this card, which is just terrible. But still, it happens. It's just my luck with that deck. But that was a monster lineup. Uh, overall, I was happy with it, other than the few changes I told you. Um, next, for spells, we played three instant fusion. This card was amazing, just being able to summon Winda. Like, I opened the Ding Winda board once. Um, going forward, this is a bit, definitely a flex spot. You don't have to play this, but I feel like it's very, very strong. Um, once I test taking the dangers out, if I like it without the dangers, I'll keep this in. But if I like the dangers, I might take these out for the ashes. I'm not sure. Um, but I really do like this card. It's a very good card, but I'm not going to completely sell out cutting this card either because it's... I feel like it's definitely a win more card. You don't have to have it, but it's very nice. Um, this could be mind controls, but I feel like that'd be more dead going first. Um, to each their own, um, I might cut it down to two because I was constantly siding out the third one, but we'll see. Uh, the deck's forever changing. Um, when you stop changing is when you become complacent. Uh, played three Call by the Grade. This card is absolutely amazing. I'm not cutting this card at all, and... It complete played offensively and defensively. Um, this in the mirror match is an absolute blowout. If you establish your board going first and then set call by the grave, you can just shut their turn off for free. Um, next, we played the two Cosmic Cyclones. Um, so I decided to play this to play around. Uh, there can only be one. Uh, and stuff like that, just like Floodgates, just to give our Draco matchup, our Altergeist matchup, a little bit easier. Um, going forward, I think I'm going to cut this, to be honest. Um, it was very subpar this weekend and didn't really do too much. <sighs> I'm so indifferent about this card. Like, every time I saw this card this weekend, if it would have been Twin Twister, it would have been a lot, a lot, lot, lot better. Like, I actually drew this per turn against the Draco player in the game three of round seven when I played Draco. I drew this... If it would have been Twin Twister, it would have brought me right immediately back in the game because he had three cards, one being uh, Soul Dream, an Imperial Iron Wall, and then a True Draco Apocalypse, if, and then uh, Dynamite Knight. If I'd have drawn, if this would have been Twin Twister in that exact instance, I would have been able to blow away the two floodgates. And then, and then establish a board. And I still had evenly matched in hand. So even if he did have something else to do, I'd still be able to like evenly match him if he was able to reestablish his board after I cleared away the uh, Imperial Iron Wall. But hindsight's 2020. Um, I'm probably going to swap this for Twin Twisters and then fix the side deck a little bit. Um, one O's, one Return, one Babel, one Rota, one Foolish. These are all just like kind of mandatory these are starter cards this is mandatory um i'm probably going to bump this to two or i'm going to add more draw power somewhere else in the deck um either being two more of these uh allure darkness into the void something i'm going to add more draw power into the deck because i just need you need ways to get your graveyard set up without relying on your normal summon which is what i realized um I bricked three times this weekend, and that's because I drew a I drew Orcus cards without extenders, or I drew this by itself. Like I drew a handful of spells with this being my only starter card, which was very unfortunate. But it at least got me to where I had a, a nightmare on board. And then finally for traps, three in perm and the one crescendo. This is mandatory. Um, these are the best. One, probably the best hand trap right now other than Phantasmay. Um, I'd say it goes Phantasmay, Impermanence, Ash. But this was just, every time I saw this this weekend was freaking phenomenal. Um, I caught one person with 
setting it and then activating a card in that zone or I was able to lock out or shut down a couple floodgates enough to where I could get Phoenix into popping it. Um, this just was phenomenal this weekend. I wouldn't change it at all. Uh, moving on to the extra deck, it's basically standard. We got our Dante Field Center. We got the one pretty Galatea and two regular ones. Uh, Phoenix came up all the time this weekend. Will not change it at all. Um, Barricade Board Blocker came up more this weekend than it ever did in testing, and I'm so glad I didn't cut it because I was very, very much considering cutting it, and I'm glad I didn't. Um, one IP, this card is just amazing. There's no need to explain it. Uh, one Long Gear Suit because this card is just, like, amazing, and you need it for, like, your turn one combos. One Trisbania. Uh, I prefer this over the Link 4 Topologic, the one with the four corners that banishes everything. Um, it came up in the Orcus Mirror Match. I was, he summoned, he ended on that Link 4. So I went, in order to play around it, he ended on a Link 4 in Babel, so he'd be able to like nuke the board at one time. Um, what I ended up doing was go reveal Nessie. He pitched a card, I summoned Nessie into a zone it pointed to. So I summoned it here. And he went ahead and banish the board which is what i wanted him to do i was baiting the banish and my thought process was i'm willing to trade my extender for the turn to get rid of his babble for the rest of the game um so that's kind of why i don't like that card just because it banishes your babble and i feel like babble is kind of your win condition right now you don't want it to get banished um we got the one unicorn this card came up so much this weekend and i absolutely loved it uh the bls link was phenomenal this weekend um it'll be less consistent to make once you once I cut the dangers, but you still have Phantasme and Gizmek. I made this more with Phantasme than I did uh, Nessie, so I don't feel like you need the dangers to be able to still play this card. Um, one bo one Game Sword Dragon, uh, two Ding, one Winda, and one Thousand Eyes. Um, I made Winda twice this weekend, and I made this twice, so like Instant Fusion doesn't really come up that much for me. Uh, I guess because I side mind control, and mind control is just a better version of instant fusion. Uh, you don't pay the thousand life points, and you don't have to waste a summon. But I guess like you get this for free, um, and this out uh, sky striker stuff. That's the only time I really used it was in the striker matchup. On to side deck, we played the three Lantia. Came up in the mirror match, was absolutely amazing. Uh, three Nibiru, I never sided this card in. Um, glad I had it. I'm very glad I had it, and I will not cut this card, but. I never sided in. Not once. Not once did I side this card in. Uh, that's nothing really else I gotta say about that. Uh, three Mind Control. This card came in every game and was phenomenal every time I saw it. It helped me out so much. This card should not be at three, but I'm super grateful it is, and I love this freaking card. Best card in the side deck. Um, then we had the three twin and three evenly matched for back row decks. Um, this came in against Striker and Draco. Um, I only saw it against Draco twice. Um, and once it got uh, Ironwald, I sided this in against Striker, never saw it. Um, I saw this a lot against Striker, which really, really helped. Um, there's a lot of games where I'd have six, eight back row removal cards in the main deck. And. It still wasn't enough in my back row matchups. So I feel like that's where I need to focus my attention on going forward is I need to focus on how to deal with control decks because those were my losses except for the one wonky mirror match. So I need to figure out how to adjust my side deck for control right now. Um, going forward, Side deck wise, I loved evenly when I saw it. It was just seeing it. Um, so I'm thinking about manning decking the twin twisters. So that will open up two slots. I'm not sure what I'd put in those two slots, but probably something to deal with uh, a back row deck. I'm not 100% sure yet though. We'll, we've got plenty of time to decide and figure out what we're gonna do before the next regionals. But for this weekend, I'm probably gonna be main decking these. Um, but guys, that's it. That's our tournament report. That is how we did this weekend. We finished five and four, losing on the bubble per usual for me this since I came back. Um, I'm still struggling, struggling to get over that hump and get my first invite since I've been back to the game. Um, 
I left the game on a high note going to Nats and barely missing out on day two and come back and struggling a little bit, but we'll get there. It's still a learning curve, still getting better every day. Um, I finally got my collection up to where I have all of the staple hand traps and stuff. Finally got my Phantasme, so now I can really focus on getting better as a player and not worry about not having the right cards to be able to play. Um, but that's all I have for you guys today, this video. Um, hopefully you enjoyed. Please drop a like if you did. If not, let me know what I can do to improve in the comment section below. Also, feel free to drop suggestions for the deck and some ideas for what I should put in for the one scrap recycler that I'm unsure of and the one danger that I'm unsure of what to swap out for. Um, we're definitely going to be putting in three Nessie or not three Nessie. <laughs> I wish we're definitely going to be putting in three Ash Blossoms and then that kind of leaves we're putting in two Twin Twisters for the Cosmic Cyclones and I'm not sure what we're going to do with the other two cards. It opens up two slots. We'll have three Math Mans then and then we'll have two slots to kind of mess around with i don't know if we want to put another hand trap or what we want to do with the extra slot um probably sh start out with some draw power but we'll see we'll see what happens but if you got hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you did like comment and subscribe and as always i hope you guys have an awesome day peace